Mark, hello. How are you today? Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I am Mustafa. I'm, I'm pretty well. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice day today in Copenhagen. We had a lot of sun. <laughs> We had a lot of sun earlier in London. We had a lot of sun. It all disappeared um, as, as as it would with London. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time to join us on this podcast on a Friday. I know it took, uh, you know, your, your, your account has been quite hectic so uh, the past couple of weeks. So I really appreciate this. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just to tell our, our audience, uh, this podcast is really about discussing uh the, the, the idea of implementing best practice, uh, especially with early stage startups who are uh, looking to scale up. And the reason we have Mark here is because we had an interesting chat and he has a quite a few things to say about how um, Capdesk, uh, the company that Mark works at, are currently doing it. But before we go into that, Mark, do you want to give us a little bit of an intro as to well, who you are? Uh, what you do, what is it that you do at Capdesk? Yes, yes, absolutely. So, uh, well, I'm uh, Mark, my, my, my full name is Marc Antoine. I'm a French Canadian uh, developer. So normally I'm based in Canada, but right now I'm visiting uh, Capdesk in Copenhagen. Uh, and I've been working as a senior front-end engineer for Capdesk since last March. Uh, I've been hired to, to, to work on the um, migration project we're on. We're on an old Angular JS app and now we want to make it new and shiny. We want to make it React. So that's what, what I work on. I, I mean, I'm very passionate about all things front end, right? But uh, uh, tech wise, it's, it's all React for now and it's very exciting. So, what is Capdesk then? Tell, I, I, I don't know, let's just say much, or I've read, obviously, that's why you're here, but or our audience probably have never heard of Capdesk. So give us a little bit of an overview. Yes. Um, well, it's very interesting because uh, we have a very, I think, tech audience right now, but everyone in tech, all engineers have uh, equity, right? They all have they all have a stock option, grants and so on. And Capdesk's goal is to solve that, to make this much easier and to allow people to understand how much your equity is worth. Like how much money do you really have? Like this company gave you this amount of grant or options, but now Capdesk want to uh, make sure that you don't use a spreadsheet anymore because people usually solve this thing with complex spreadsheets that are outdated and lots of error in, and that's that's what Capdesk is trying to solve uh, primarily. And then uh, the next thing we, we try to, to focus on, or next big thing, if I could say, are uh, secondaries, uh, the ability to make, well, to sell uh, your actions, your your equity, uh, without an exit, even such as an, an IPO or uh, something similar. So that's the, the big thing we're we're tackling. Okay, Mark. Um, the, the the idea of secondaries. I just don't think many people are aware of what secondaries are. Um, probably no clue. <laughs> what it what it is? I certainly I wasn't you know I'm not until I've obviously researched what Capdesk is I wasn't very familiar to be honest. So do you want to give us a little bit of explanation? What is secondaries to those who probably don't necessarily know? Yes, absolutely. And I I had the same reaction. I didn't know this product existed when I joined Capdesk, so uh, I had to learn it. Uh, it's brilliant. So you you um, you joined the company offline. You didn't say it's normal. It's okay not to know. Yes. Uh, so. The idea is that any companies that is registered in Capdesk will grant you option as an employee. So an engineer will then be awarded, I don't know, 2,000 shares over a couple of years. But when you see them in Capdesk, then uh, if the company agree, you get to sell them. And that's that's a secondary. It's a secondary sale of your, your equity. You get to, to have a uh, value for equity because normally, I, I know many of my friends who have equity, they just think it's it's, it's worth nothing. I, they they would like to have better salary. They don't care about this because, uh, and even more in Europe, it's it's rare that you hear about somebody who made a million out of its equity because he was working at that big uh, that big unicorn that had an IPO and that you never hear that. So Capdesk is trying to solve that in a way by allowing you to come onto Capdesk when your company is registered there and just make money out of it. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit uh, a gross uh, simplification, but 
that's that's but how it, it goes. In, in a nutshell, it is what it is. It, it, yes, it might be as you said, gross oversimplification, simplification, but it, it it is as simple as that. You join, you get given shares as part of your package. Um, in a way, if the company is registered on CapDesk, it just means that you don't need to look at these shares as, um, you know, <laughs> a, a something that doesn't really hold much value, where most people tend to, as you said, now they look at them as such, because later on, you can't do that. So how does it actually happen on CapDesk? What, what, how does that process work? I, I've joined the company, as you said, I've got some shares. Um, company value seems to be increasing uh i've noticed i want to make a big purchase or i just want some money i'm going to make some money on my shares i want to sell some of them how how would that work it's it's slightly hard to give a single answer here because each company have their own rules of how they want to do that because the company first have to agree uh, say okay I, I want to allow my my oldest investors some of my old employees that have now fully vested perhaps uh, their shares and now we'd like to reward them so they, they can I think most of the time it's like they make an event not a single day event but maybe even a, I don't really I don't fully know when you say okay so during this period of time we will uh, allow people to bid on the share people want to sell so everybody can say okay I, I go to cap desk I have uh, 2,000 shares uh, I want to sell half, so I make uh, a sell offer. I say, those 1,000 share, I want to sell for $10 each, $15 each, whatever it's worth, I don't know. And then somebody else mm, that have been approved by the company that can, maybe other employees, if another employee really believe in, in the company and want to bid on it further, he can buy uh, more shares or uh, investors or anybody. That is allowed. You make uh, a buy offer, and at the end of the day, when everything is over, uh, the money is paid, the uh, actions, options, whatever, are transferred, and everybody is happier. Some have more money, some have more uh, equity. But obviously, because it's done through capital, so it doesn't have to be. Um, it doesn't have to be fellow. Um, company employees for example it can be anybody who's registered on the captis platform so you know i understand obviously everybody's vetted it's not like that is it anybody or is it does it have to be part of that company itself as well some <laughs> as in the buyer uh it's it's private right so uh, i think he, a company can decide who gets to buy so uh, i'd say most of the time those are a pretty tight group of people uh either investors uh employees i don't think it's open uh, for everyone, but if a exactly, company so it's would not like an open to... auction. It's not an exactly no. open auction to everybody. It's quite private, controlled, as they say, um, safe environment. But as it, but it's not open to everybody. Exactly, and I think often there's rules as how many shares can somebody buy. You you wouldn't want someone to get in amazing uh, amounts of share and just control the Take company. Take control over the company overnight, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's a bunch of rules that we set in place for that uh, based on what the company actually wants. And we just create, yeah, exactly, this safe environment for you to to give this very nice opportunity to your... Uh, sometimes it's early investors too that just... Yeah, it's been five, six years, and now they want to cash in on some of their investments. They're ready to maybe not uh, let go all of their investment, but part of it. And this is a chance for them to do so. Brilliant. I'm sure that that that, that I'm sure that clarifies uh, things up for for our audience. Yes, yes. <laughs> and how old are you guys, Capdesk as a company? I think the initial initial idea and funding came six or seven years ago, so we're quite old. But I, the Series A was uh, Series A and Series A extension were last year, so I, I, I'd say we're picking up a lot of speed lately. Um, so yeah, six seven years old. Six seven years old, been been in the market. So this problem that you guys are trying to solve at the moment, trying to replace the Excel spreadsheets, the, the, the confusion of how this is to happen. How, do you want to tell us about how that actually tends to work? Uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Honestly, like our client usually come to us with their spreadsheet and we have to take them in our project. So we have a, a nice team of onboarding people and customer success who are, 
basically taking all those spreadsheets, making sure the data makes sense, and then just uh, importing that into our own system, which has a lot of built-in validations and a bunch of cool features to just allow you to manage that without the spreadsheet. Try, try, try to kill the spreadsheet, basically. Forget about it. This is, this, is, this is the new way. So in a way, for those who aren't necessarily very familiar um, with, with this whole world, really, um, if we're to break it down to a very basic example, it's like an accounting CRM or accounting software trying to replace the spreadsheet in a way. Spreadsheet is of the ancient old times. It's gone. This is the new. This is the modern way, the easier way, more efficient way, better way. I, I guess it covers part of that. But I think one, one thing that's really interesting to me, like as an engineer who has actions in some companies and equity, is that uh, we're trying to offer uh, a way for not, not only like the CTO and finance people, a way to manage that, but a way for the whole company and everyone to feel involved in the company because now you can go on CapDesk, you log in as an employee and you see, oh, so right now I am vesting this many uh, option each month and they are worth uh, this many. And every time you raise a new round, you can go see uh, with the new valuation how it goes. And I think that's very exciting, right? It's not only about, oh, we're, we're putting a spreadsheet to the garbage bin. It's more about we're making equity a much more interesting and attracting product. And easier to understand for those who don't necessarily understand it. Yes, yes, exactly. That's, that's brilliant. That, that, is, that, is, that is quite brilliant. Is, is it the idea of the company that made you want to join CapDesk in the first place? Hmm. Mm, no. Well, I mean, I, I like finance and I really think equity is a wonderful product, something that pushed me to work harder every day, right? But, uh, I mean, it's the team, it's the tech stack. I, the best product, if it was uh, written in very old technology with uh, insane work condition, wouldn't be attractive to me. So uh, I'd say the culture and the, 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 everything around CapDesk made the trick for me. Okay, brilliant. Well, th th in a way, this brings us on to the very topic of this, of, of this episode. You told us before, we, we had this chat, we, had, we were discussing how it is very important to implement best practice from the start. Um, and that was what you were saying. And then I was saying how, well, it's very challenging because lots of companies just want to, you know, meet what their investors would say and meet the deadlines and simply deliver, which means they don't always have time for best practice. You said that's not how you guys do it. It is all about best practice. So that's what we're here to talk about. But let's identify what best practice is. So early stages in a company like CapDesk, what are we, what are we talking about best practice? What do we really mean here? Hmm. Well, I think we're cheating a bit at CapDesk in a, a small way because like, we're a startup, right? But we already have quite a big um, uh, customer base. And we're not uh, like we're well-founded. We're not chasing for uh, day-to-day -day life. That gives us a bit more breathing room. So uh, I just want to say that as a disclaimer, because some early, early stage startup that are living, like they're working for their life, uh, then maybe it's a bit harder. But I like that. that. I, I'm sure <laughs> who, who listen will appreciate that. We'll appreciate that. Yes, certainly. Yeah. So just, just my little disclaimer, because I know... Like I've worked at more uh, early stage startup than that, and it, it can be hard. But this being said, I think that when I talk about best practice, I'm thinking about what do we need to do to ensure that what we do right now is scalable and will be for a long, for the, on the long run, right? Because if you uh, build everything uh, really quickly and without thinking too much about it, then yeah, sure, you will build a lot of stuff in the first six months, but then a big or a weird request will be uh, sent your way by a customer or by, I don't know, somebody. And then you'll just realize that what you've built isn't working anymore. And then you will have so much more work to do to fix the initial decision. So best practice is how do we make it in a way that scale, I think? And what are the actual actions we're taking to make it scale, to make it work nicely all the time? Okay, makes that's, that's, that makes perfect sense. It is, however, quite general. So what is it that you guys are doing, you know, 
that when we spoke, you told me this is one of the reasons I really joined CapDisk because the implementation of best practice from the early days. This is very important. This was very important to you. I remember you saying, mm-hmm. give us maybe, a, let's start with one example for now. What does that look like from, from your perspective, I suppose, as a developer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when I, when I joined CapDesk, I was given the reign of this project, of this, the migration to, um, to React, right? So I just had to put in place every process. Let's, let's say uh, you want to make a new feature. Like, how do you, like, I think it's very classic to hear about unit tests, to hear about end-to-end tests. Uh, but then <clears throat> it's, it's, all about, it's all about how do you actually make sure those are are actually implemented because uh, it's very easy. You have a rush. Oh, th- let's not write tests for this feature, right? So uh, at CapDesk, the thing that I was interested in, and I'd say, oh, I, I want to work there, was that I was uh, assured that I would have the time to write the test I need to put in place the end-to-end test, the regression test, to put all the little piece in place to build this really nice, uh, this really nice stack, and. Uh, that's a crazy thing, right? Even to this day, my manager doesn't push me to just uh, rush new features. Sometimes there's bug. That's that's a different thing. You need to fix them fast. But if this feature takes this amount of time because uh, we want to make sure that it's well tested, because we want to make sure it's accessible and so on, then we're given the time to do that. It's part of the engineering culture to, sure, we need to iterate. We cannot make it perfect on the first uh, try. But then uh, there's something we, we rare, rarely accept to bypass, such as uh, tests, for instance. And if, as you said, lots of companies, lots of companies don't necessarily have, or startups don't have the luxury to do so. But if you're a large organization, how important is it really? for you to implement best practice. And I suppose by asking this question, I'm not really um, targeting the answer at fellow developers who, who, who will probably be listening because I'm sure they would agree. It's more really targeted at uh, perhaps founders or non-technical management who it's important that they hear the importance of best practice from early days from you know uh, an experienced engineer. Mm-hmm. I think I'm, I'm going to try to answer that with to answer in one. So first I said test, 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 and it, it's so much more than that, right? There's a whole lot of process or like just, oh, let's, let's think about how we'll design this new page, this new feature, this new thing. Uh, those are not really technical stuff, but uh, taking the time to do things properly, to have a proper design process and stuff, it, it's normal, right? Most companies do that. But then to be uh, very strict about it, it's something that is harder. So th- I, I just want to set that first, but then the reason, let's say I want to convince my CTO at my next company that I want to do what I did at CapDesk, right? Like what I would say to him is basically, if we don't follow those best practices, uh, we're taking time we have now and we'll, we're loaning, loaning it. Like we're selling this time for future time, because if we're uh, not doing this right now, we're winning 10 hours maybe. But then in two months, we might lose 30 because we have to go back in time, fix stuff. And I think it's pretty well known that a bug in production is much, much more expensive to fix than one uh, that you catch in your dev environment. So those things are super important, right? The earlier you catch the bad idea, the mistake, the, the whatever, uh, best practice try to stop the better it is so so here's my here's, here's my question how actually i have two 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 things here two uh which which i know two challenges which i've you know i've heard time and time again um in in this kind of debate and argument um you'll get non-technical managers and their belief is all this is really doing it's just for the to make the life of the development team easier. It's not really to, nothing to do with the delivery of the project, the, 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 the company's products or how the company operates. It's just to make the developer's life easier. Um, and to them, they view it as, well, it's a developer's job to do these things. How wrong or right would you say this kind of argument would be 
<laughs> You're asking that to is, is it just, is it just, <laughs> Well, I, I know, but you know, this is what we. This is what it is. Is it just to make your life easier, guys, as an engineer? And I'm talking to guys, you know, as a developers, or is it actually, you know, this is a company benefit? It's important to get it right. Mm-hmm. I have a nice image in mind, and I'll share it with you. So, uh, let's say engineering is. Uh, it's the engine of the car that is the company, right? Because yes, sure, you have sales, but if you don't have a product and you're a, a software as a service, then you don't have a car. You just have an empty shell. Uh, I'd say best practices are the oil. You can make a few extra miles with old oil or like without changing it. But at some point, if you refuse to change it, then like your motor just gonna stop working. The engine will not carry you much further because uh, it will be stuck. It will. It won't be greased properly. So I think that's that, right? I mean, if you refuse those best practices and say, oh, they're just to make engineering life easier. Well, then so is oil. Oil is just to make the engine life easier. (laughs) But do you change your oil every couple of months in your car? Well, I think so. Um, So yeah, I think it, I mean, you can have slightly less, uh, lesser quality oil, but everybody puts oil in their car. You still need you still need to change the oil. Here's another thing, and this is what very common as well. Tomorrow's problem is tomorrow's problem. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We just need to get through this today and or this project now. And every time it's firefighting time and time and time again. How detrimental this kind of culture is to a company. Uh, if it's short term, it's not detrimental, right? You need you need to make money. If you don't have money, you don't pay your engineer and ultimately you don't have a company anymore. Uh, and I think one of one of our value, and I think it's one of value engineering embraced the most at Cabdesk is iteration. You cannot make it perfect on the first try. We're not trying to make it perfect on the first try, but at some point uh, you need to make, there's a minimum level that you, a minimum level that you need to have. And, um, Honestly, it's detrimental if you decide to always say, oh, we don't have time, we don't have time. Because if you never have time, then the, the whole machine, the whole process will stop working. Um, yeah. You're, you're, no, it's, you're, you're, you're an engineer. Obviously, you can't speak to for, for every single engineer. But when you are put in such a culture, is, you know, would you say you would fight it out and try and change things from within or will you simply, you know, jump ship to somewhere that pretty much appreciates, as you said, the need to change the oil of the car quite regularly? <laughs> yes. I mean, I think, I think slow incremental changes are possible. Like you don't, you join a new team, you don't need to start screaming and yell at the manager that, oh, your processes doesn't work and blah, blah, blah. That, that's that's not the way to go. I think so. Small incremental changes are possible, and I would I would advocate for those changes because I think they're good for the engineering thing. And on the long run, you get faster development time because of them. Um, but a, a, as you said, like it's it's detrimental to have no best practices. But I, I think it could also be detrimental to have too much processes in place. So like there's a it's a balance, right? If you have 12,000 processes and the CI and the test takes hours because you have so many tests that maybe you're not at the right place on the scale. You need to just find what's right for your company. Uh, early stage company might be a bit uh, more free in the sense So there that... is a such thing as too much, you know, best implementation, but too, too much obsession with that. Have you seen it? Have you seen, have you seen, have you obviously don't, without naming any names, we can't name any names on that, but have you actually seen um too much obsession with best practice well surely i did i mean it's it's easy to see like uh if you try to think too much in the future sometime you'll lose yourself like as you said like tomorrow's problems are tomorrow's problem right uh sometime you need to fix the problem that you currently have make a first iteration let's do it like that and i think it's something we embrace a lot at capdesk to say, this is the current solution. We know it's not perfect. We'll make another one next day. And <laughs> this is a bit uh, meta. Like we have process to improve our process, right? We have ways for us, like um, 
like postmortem, we have retrospective, we have a bunch of different ways. Say. So last month went, went properly, uh, but what could we improve? How could we make uh, the process we had better from now on? Um, I, I'm forgetting the name right now of one of the things that are, is really nice, wash-ups. We do wash-ups at the end of every onboarding. Like, how did you like your onboarding? Uh, how was it? How can we improve on the next time? I mean, all across the organization, we put in place a lot of things that we like. And it's very often powered by the employees. It's like, this this one came in, uh, I think, wash-up were by um, uh, Scarlett. Scarlett came in and said, can we can we put this in place? I've had this on my previous company. It worked properly. And you get a chance to prove your point and say, that work well, it, it get us where we want to, then let's adopt it and let's move on. And if in six months we think that it's not useful anymore, then we'll stop doing it. So basically, you, you, so you, you have this culture where anybody can simply bring in an idea and, you know, it, it will, if it's a good idea, as you said, with, for example, with, with your colleagues at Scarlet, then it gets implemented. And if it's not right, then it doesn't work and it doesn't work, but you actually in a way, you're giving it a chance. Absolutely. Even even in tech, uh, we have uh, we use something that is very close to the Rust RFC process. So you can make a request for comment. Um, engineer will discuss it, and if it's accepted, uh, then it can become one of our new best practice. So we can say, "Hey, I would like us to always have three person on each um, code reviews." Cool. Awesome. Let's do that. If the team agree, then we do it. But then if after two weeks we say, oh, it's taking us too much time, engineers don't have time to uh, review, uh, to have three reviewers each, then we scrape that again and we, we carry on with the process. It's uh, sometimes sometime we make bad decisions, but I think most of the time uh, it's positive. Okay, here's the big question now. We, get, we, we have to ask this, this big question. You surely couldn't have known all of this about Capitalist before you joined. What made you actually join? Uh, this I, I I know we briefly touched upon it in our previous chats, but I left this big question. I thought I'd let you answer it on the episode. I, I didn't want to spoil it for myself either. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, what made me join Capdesk? Honestly, the project is is exciting. <laughs> uh, the, the actual how... solution they're bringing to the market. Well, yeah, I mean equity. It's 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 very nice. I mean, it's it's weird to say that finance are exciting, right? <laughs> it's uh, it could be uh, the most <laughs> sorry, uh, cap deskers that listen to me it could be the most boring thing in, on earth, right? <laughs> but then, I think actually understanding how each country works with their equity schemes and how we manage all this, it's actually very interesting. That and to be honest, the migration project is is crazy interesting, right? Uh, I was given so much trust and flexibility. It's, it's great. Okay. That's what I want to talk about this, this. Okay. This is, I want to talk about this. I want to ask about this. I want to find out more about this. I want to make some of our audience quite jealous because lots of developers in many startups or organizations in general, forget startups or not just startups, even larger ones don't have much autonomy, uh, much freedom, much space to play around to, you know, be themselves to really um, bring to the table what they are capable of bringing to the table. Be creative, you know. I want you to tell us about that. Let's let's get some of the audience jealous. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, if if you are a specialist, somebody that you trust for a role, and you don't let him do is what he knows best, then you're missing the point, right? So they are the senior front end engineer. They only had full stack engineer when I joined. And right now we're only two front end engineers. So uh, please join us. We need more. <laughs> you are, you are, we'll get into that. We'll, we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you awesome. that platform. You're going to advocate. You're going to tell people what you're looking for. Yeah. Tell us about this little bit. Let's, let's get people jealous first. But yeah, so basically like we have process, right? So uh, my, my first task was basically to say, okay, where are we going now? So I had to make a proposal or RFC. So I wrote this big document and I said, so here's why React, here's why I think it's good for us. Uh, here's the alternatives, uh, Svelte, Vue, so on. Uh, and then I was basically just uh, given white cards, like 
uh, I'm not sure if it's an expression in English, but in French it would mean. Uh, it is. It is actually. It is. Uh, well, it's, no, no, no. Well, not in English. No, I recognize it. I'm, I'm the, I come from Arab descent, so we use that. It's it's like giving a blank check, basically. Yeah, That's exactly. And at this point, sure, I, like my manager Vincent was checking with me uh, every now and then that I was progressing nicely. I had to ship something, not in production, right, but to have something to show each week or each period of time. But then that was mine to build. I just had to uh, create, I basically created my own front end best practice, my own processes, because there was not like the old Angular application was built with uh, within a Ruby on Rail application. And we just said, no, let's strip that off. We create a new single page application and that's it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, it's hard to fully grasp how much flexibility I had, but uh, I could have built whatever I wanted at that point. So, so let's let's let, let let me let me try and get this. So they brought you as an expert in your field, and they gave you the platform. Basically, do you know what? You're the expert. Guide us through it. Not here. Here's what you want to do. I want you to do it. Yes. Well, we're on a very old Angular 1 version, which uh, its end of life is somewhat soon. So it was like, okay, we, we really need to get going on this project and to, uh, to abandon the old, the old platform. Uh, I think the very challenging thing and the thing I had to prove was how do we do it? Like we cannot go into two years submarine mode where we just build features without showing them to the user. How do we get something to our user? as soon as possible. So I had to, once I built this prototype and I showed them, hey, this is how it will work and this is why uh, why we should do it like that. They just said, okay, that's that's fine, it will work. And we started building it. So uh, as soon as uh, I think early July, we shipped the first React page in production and it's living side by side with, your, with our Angular application and I mean, unless you're a front-end engineer and very have the, the eagle eye, you will probably not see that you're on two different applications when you navigate to our website. I think it's the magic of it. And from that on... The I normal think, user, then it's just not going to... A normal average user isn't really going to be able to tell. No yeah, chance. it's invisible. And now we just uh, we migrated maybe dozens of pages since that time. And we just uh, build new features with that. Uh, recently, we've made this very cool uh, facelift project where we just applied a new uh, a new layer of makeup. Old old cap desk was looking a bit uh, deprecated and sad, so now hope oh, new colors and such. And I mean, I think the front end at cap desk has never been so so healthy. Um, I'm not gonna brag here, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You're allowed. You're you're allowed to brag. You're absolutely allowed to brag. Um, what, okay. You said earlier you're Canadian French and you're currently from the Copenhagen office. Yes. So where where are you based? Quebec, Quebec City. Um, but we're lucky right now. We're in like uh, pandemic uh, restrictions slowed down a bit, so we decided to to pay a visit to our uh, European friends. So last week we were in London because we also have an office in uh, downtown London. I wouldn't know where because the city is too big. <laughs> and then, all right. No worries. And then this week we're in Copenhagen visiting the Segan office. We we do have a bit of a hybrid uh, setup because we have two offices and then we have a bunch of satellites. Um, but I think we're we're still hiring everywhere. We have employee in many different countries: uh, Egypt, uh, Portugal, Spain, uh, Germany. Uh, Romania, Canada, so like we're hiring everywhere. As so basically, long as... it's completely remote. You're not you're not really restricted to, uh, you know, um, a location where you have a satellite office or not. Basically, you're just hiring. Or... So basically, whoever joins um, CapDesk, they can work from pretty much anywhere they want. There's no restriction. Yes, I think they... <laughs> we've coined the term for that as team, team first. You you do what you want. Like if you want to go to the office in Copenhagen. You go in the office in Copenhagen. Uh, we we're using a platform that lets hire people from, I'd say almost everywhere in the world. So, uh, if you want to work from whatever country you're from, then just do it. 
live live your best life that's 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 pretty cool you, um, you are kind of tempting me now i, wonder, I need to, uh, to, to to see whether you guys have vacancies at cab disc <laughs> but okay you've got the remote working going on for you which is absolutely brilliant but there was one thing also uh i want to talk about and uh, uh well two points really the first is you said obviously you were brought on board allowed the you were given the freedom to 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 bring your proposal and etc uh, etc et is the challenge over is it that's it now have, uh, is it done so whoever joins basically do they still have or if you're if, if they're a developer they're the creative they're the inquisitive type or wants to you know uh problem solve is it is it is it finished the challenge or uh, not 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 by a long mile <laughs> Not at all. I mean, there's so much more to do. Uh, we, we've set very nice, we've set a very nice stack in place, a very nice framework. Like we have, we know where we're going, but now there's first, there's so many much more pages to migrate and that might not be the most exciting thing. But then whenever we land on a page, we see many way to upgrade it to make it better than it was. And we're usually given the chance to do so. So it's not only, oh, take this thing and write it again in the new framework. It's, hey, this page, what do you think about it? Could we make it better? Let's let's make it in React. Cool. So there's that. But then, like, we have so many big projects. Uh, uh, all the, the old transaction squad, people that are working on secondaries, making sure that uh, you as a company get to offer a secondary event to your employee, to your investor. Uh, there's a lot going on there. We're expanding a lot of big projects like Capdesk. We're we're trying to to expand, make uh, new clients, but also solve new problems. Okay, let's just say, twenty twenty two. Come on, come on, Mark. Give me some of the challenges. Twenty twenty two. Biggest challenges you have? Well, we're going after new markets. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to build to uh, to make sure that Capdesk remain one of the biggest players in Europe. Well, the biggest. Uh, equity cap table. Yes, that's exactly the biggest. See, that's that's ambition. That's ambition. We don't need <laughs> one of the biggest. The biggest. Love like, that. I, I don't know if I'm drop. If I'm uh, if Christian will call me yelling if when you hear that. But I think we're uh, looking to raise a Series B next year, uh, or maybe Ooh. early 2023. So there's a lot of things to do. Uh, we're hiring a lot to to fill those needs. A lot of engineers because we want to build new stuff. We want to get aggressive uh, with our product and make sure that we, we remain competitive. Well, you don't, you don't, well, that's, that's the thing. I'm sure everyone would agree uh, listening. You don't exactly uh, go after a series B and start to hire a lot, unless you have a lot of project projects coming up, exciting stuff, scaling. That's, that's usually what this means. So a lot of opportunities. Um, that's great stuff. Okay, this will probably get people straight to your website. Okay, what is going on here? We just want to have a look at those vacancies. But one of the things that a lot of startups have is they can be quite picky about what they want. So that's a challenge we've always faced as a community with the startups that we work with is that they say, look, we just, we're looking for somebody, you know, these are the vacancies we have, but we need somebody to fit into those vacancies. We don't really have much room to play around because well, we just need them to do this. We'll give them the freedom, for example, like Capdesk does, but we need them to fit this bill. How is, is that, is that a similar case for you guys? I mean, I, I'm going to ask a question first, like who, who can do that right now with the, the employee, like uh, the engineering market right now, like who can be picky? I think uh, unless you're one of the biggest player that can give a uh, massive, massive, uh, salary i think you need to bring in some flexibility you need to be able to do that i think capdesk is great at this I, I, we've been so nice with how we we actually do our hiring process a lot of really small thing uh feedback we give every person gets i, I don't know if it's actually every person but most person that get to a certain point in our hiring process will get a personal video from the manager that was trying to hire them saying uh it didn't work out for you because this and that so i think that's very nice and then we're so much we're so flexible like uh we don't even hire like we have a, a ruby on rails uh, application i don't we don't care if you don't know ruby on rails is are you a good full stack engineer 
are you then fine we'll take you do you have some flaws do you know them do you accept them and do you want to work on them then fine you fit the bill that's what we want we want people that want to learn with us and we're happy to teach them whatever they need to be to be better and to make captives better so i think that's great are you happy and... to teach them are you happy to train them then is that something you guys are you know, you, 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 you're open, I know you say that, but you're open to doing it because in many cases, organizations say, yeah, yeah, we're open, come in, but then they're left to their own accords to actually do the learning and they're kind of floating around, not having a clue what is going on. Um, well, yeah, absolutely. I, I love to teach and I think it's a common trait uh, in the team. People are eager to share their knowledge. There's no gatekeeper. We just try to show you what we know show you what we think is the best way to to do your job and we have many process code reviews and code review is an easy one right you can uh, share a lot of information through that but even at a management level we have um, what, what we call the career progression framework that was put in place very recently where we actually uh, each quarter try to see okay where are you in your career you're a individual contributor uh, which we encourage if you want to stay that and you don't have a management career, that's totally fine with us. So where are you and how can you improve? What's the next step? How do you get from where you are to where you are plus one? What's what's the, the thing you need to fix? Is it your technical skills? Then sure, we'll we'll make more programming session with you. We'll make sure that you, you understand the code better, that you understand uh, the language better and we'll bring you to this next step in your career. I think that's a, a great strength. And... I, um, I must plug that, but I think something awesome at CapDesk is that we have two student developer. How many startups take student developer, right? I think that's crazy. Like we have two guys that are part-time with us for the last, since I've joined, they're there. Like uh, Raphael and Christoph, they work for us. Uh, I work for them every day and I treat them as my peer. Like they are no different. I try to teach them what I can and sometimes they even teach me stuff. As incredible as that is with your, with your scale, um, is or are the opportunities now at CampDesk, given that you are going to scale? If somebody's to join, are they going to be there to do that job? Or is there, uh, is there a way for them to progress further and further and develop and grow with the company as it grows? Because one thing that some startups have is that as they grow, they feel that their current members aren't necessarily up to the need or, the, or up to the task. So they start to hire externally people to fill in that gaps which you know can create a bit of a toxic environment because the people who have been there from the start or have joined early day, earlier days let's just say feel a bit kind of disheartened well you've overlooked me i could have had the opportunity does capdesk offer that absolutely i think uh the way we do thing is like management and uh people in general they want to make the best out of you. They want to. They want to help you promote your own growth. And uh, like right now, we're hiring. I think team leads because we we need them. Like we don't have any. Uh, we don't have enough people in those positions right now. But what I really like in the process uh, is they said so. We're hiring. Let's say three, four. I don't know some a number of team leads, and they said to us to all the companies. So I'm not even <laughs> in creating this. Uh, we're hiring them internally or externally. So if they are people in the current engineering squad or uh, in the anyways that want to be uh, engineering lead and you think you're up for it, then you can basically apply for the role, I guess. So there's a way for you internally to say, okay, I want to be, I would like to start doing people management. Then you can do that. So I think that's very good. And then even if you don't want to be a manager, I think we always uh, seek way to say, oh, you're a senior engineer. What's the next step? How do you get to be uh, a staff engineer? How do you need, how do you get to be a technical leader? What are the steps and what are the way we can get there? And I mean, it's, it's pretty recent, so I, I can't say that nobody uh, is now uh, three level higher than when you joined. But I think over a year or two, we'll see that happen. Well, that's brilliant to hear. That's very reassuring. I'm sure the the audience will 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 uh, you know like the sound of that. Okay, to end it, some of the vacancies you guys currently have. Do you want to, do you want, do you, this this is an opportunity for you to tell me about what you are looking for, who you're looking for. Give a bit of a an overview, really. Um, I 
I'm not sure about this, the first one, but I think we're still hiring uh, at least maybe one front-end engineer because the goal is to create a certain number of squad uh, from the Spotify model of squad, tribe, and so on. So we'd need at least one or two more front-end engineer. But we're hiring six, maybe eight developer right now. So uh, full stack engineer. Uh, I mean, we look like we look for a senior front-end engineer because we need to go fast. But uh, if you're if you're uh, talented and and you you pass our interview process, then you have you have good luck to to make it. And we're also hiring team leads uh, to support our growth to help us uh, lead those team to create uh, just great product. So uh, yeah, plenty of uh, hire over the next. I'd say if we're like, we'd like to make it happen in the next two quarters, right? <laughs> that would be Ooh, the dream. Lots of vacancies to be fill, to fill in the next in the next few 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 well few months really yeah exactly great stuff great stuff well look we on that um i will say thank you very much for your time mark really appreciate that i know people will probably one day speak to you you're probably going to have lots of people reaching out to you guys saying well i don't 100 percent fit the bill that exactly you're looking for but we did hit mark on the podcast saying not to shy away from applying so so probably i, I i'd be ready for that but thank you very much indeed for your time mark really appreciate it it's been great having you here today and I'll just, I'll, I'll let you be and enjoy the rest of your Friday. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get to enjoy a couple of beer in Copenhagen with the team. I think we have a team event uh, brewing up right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's it. Don't let, don't let me hold you up then. Don't let me hold. I can hear, I can hear that. We can hear the door closing now. Clearly people starting to move around. Thank you very much once again. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so Take much. Bye-bye.